As a professional book editor, I am often the most critical about a novel's opening pages. That's because it is so, so critical to nail that opening scene in order to hook your reader's interest and also set their expectations for the rest of the story. A good opening scene will compel the reader to dive deeper into the story and get lost in it, while a bad opening scene is going to turn them off entirely. Today, I wanna to walk through some of the worst and most cliche ways to open a novel in the hopes that you will avoid them and find a more engaging and effective opening to your story. I'm also going to read through some examples of what these cliche or overused openings look like. Also, I did write them myself, so be nice, but I know they're not going to be the most well-written examples out there. Now, if you are anywhere along the book writing journey, I recommend subscribing to my channel. Every week, I either give writing advice like this one, or I talk about the publishing industry and how you can get your book out in the world, and I would love to have you around. So let's dive into one of the worst ways to open your novel, which is with a phone call in the middle of the night. Let me read you an example of what this could look like. John's phone buzzed on his nightstand. He groaned, rolled over, and checked the alarm clock. Who could possibly be calling at 3.44 a.m.? He snuck out of bed quietly to avoid rousing Amy. As he stood, he saw the caller ID and his heart thumped. Not him again. So it is a good idea to start your novel with a point of intrigue and action because that is going to kickstart the plot and give you momentum right from the beginning. I do like that this opening introduces a point of intrigue because the reader is curious to learn who is calling John. However, this particular situation of being woken up in the middle of the night by an unexpected phone call is just a cliche and it's quite overdone in fiction, particularly in the mystery or thriller genre. So a way to use this tactic but make it a little bit more organic and creative is to just have John be going about his regular routine you know, doing something that he would normally do in his day because that helps establish his character. We get to see, you know, what a normal day in the life of John looks like. We get to know him and then have him be interrupted in whatever he's doing by getting the call. So with that, you will have a little bit of character development and then boom, you'll come in with the inciting action of the plot and you don't turn the reader off by leaning on this middle of the night phone call cliche. The next example of a bad way to open your novel is with a long passage of exposition or backstory. Let's have a look at an example. John and Amy met in their freshman year at Stone Creek University in 1988. He was pre-med and she was studying art history. After four years of dating, they got married, moved to the Chicago suburbs, and built a life together. The reason that this isn't really an effective opening to the novel is just because it is not that engaging and frankly is a boring way of relaying this information. I could feel myself getting bored just reading it aloud. Anytime the narrator is just dumping a large amount of information to the reader all at once, particularly at the very, very beginning of the novel, it's really hard for the reader to get hooked in and intrigued. A version of this opening strategy often happens in sci-fi and fantasy novels as well, where the first few pages are long passages explaining the novel's universe or how it came to be what it is, because often you're dealing with a situation where you need to do world building to orient the reader in the world right at the beginning, but dumping a lot of expository information about the characters or about the world is really not the best way to open your novel. Instead, you want to weave in those expository or backstory details as you get the plot moving. You want to contain that information within the present narrative scene. What this will look like is a sentence or two of exposition or backstory as it becomes relevant in the plot, rather than a number of paragraphs or whole pages of exposition just coming directly from the narrator. It's really almost always a better strategy to weave in exposition as you go, rather than kind of pausing or halting, or in this case, delaying the start of the plot to convey all of that exposition or backstory. It is critical that you give the reader this information, and it is critical that we get it early in the novel. However, be careful with not front-loading it, especially in those critical first few paragraphs. 
The next example of a bad way to open your novel is with a dream sequence. So this could look something like this. John caught the man's eye across the poker table. He was certain he was bluffing. I'm all in, John declared confidently. Smirking, the man flipped his cards, a royal flush. John checked his hand again, but that's impossible. The man wrapped his arms around the stack of chips, cackling as it started to grow taller and taller. This can't be happening, this can't be gasping. John woke up next to Amy. So this approach to the opening kind of feels like a cheap trick because you hook the reader into this scene, they start to get invested, and then just as they become intrigued, you kind of reveal that, oh, it, it never really happened and that was all just a dream. You can kind of lose your reader's trust with an opening like this because you don't want them to feel that there's a risk that you're gonna do it again and you're going to pull some kind of twist on them that changes everything that they just read. What I recommend doing instead is honestly cutting the dream sequence and beginning the novel with the first moment of the plot's action. That said, you're clearly trying to do something with this dream sequence, right? In this case, conveying John's fears and anxiety about his gambling. You can still convey that, but I recommend doing so within the main narrative potentially with John having some honest reflection with himself consciously, rather than forcing it into a dream sequence, which just takes the reader out of the main narrative and can be disorienting or in this case, feel like a cheap trick of some kind. The next bad novel opening I want to go through is when you start the novel mid conversation. Let's look at an example. What do you mean you lost the money? Amy shouted, her face was red with anger. I'm so sorry, I wish it hadn't come to this. John was ashamed. I promise I'll make it up to you. I can't believe you would do this to me, to us. As a reader, do you feel like you have a strong sense of what John and Amy are arguing about? Because I don't. We can't interpret the dynamics of what exactly is going on in this conversation between John and Amy because we just don't have the context of the conversation. We don't even know who these characters are, where they are, or what their relationship to each other is. So because of that, the drama of the conversation really doesn't resonate with the reader because we're not understanding what the stakes are. So how could you revise this to be a stronger opening? You can still keep this exchange within the opening scene. However, you would leverage the narration to provide more context as to who John and Amy are, what they're doing, where they are, and what they're arguing about. That way, you'll be able to provide more insight into what this conversation is all about, what prompted it, so the reader can truly track what's going on. And in this case, I would recommend against opening with the line from Amy. I don't love the first line of a novel being a line of dialogue. You can do it. It's just a personal preference that I would prefer it be a line of narration before you dive into the dialogue. The last example of a bad way to open your novel is with a lengthy setting description. Let's take a look at an example. The peaceful suburb was quiet and still. The sun hadn't quite peaked over the horizon yet, and all the well-maintained houses were awash in a yellowish haze. It was autumn, which meant the days were getting shorter and the air was getting colder. Today was unseasonably warm. So while this description is nice, and it does help us visualize the scene, it really isn't particularly engaging because we have absolutely no idea where the plot is going or who the characters are. And that's really what we are reading for. We're not reading for setting, we are reading for characters and for plot. Too much setting description will ultimately bore your readers. Remember that the setting is just like the backdrop of a stage production. It's there and you want the reader to be able to register it, but the meat and potatoes of your story is your characters and the action, AKA the actors on the stage and the choreography on the stage. The spotlight should be on them you never see the spotlight really on the backdrop. So what I recommend doing instead here is incorporating a little bit of scene setting in the opening, but make sure it's brief and you really introduce us to the main characters and the inciting action of the plot ASAP. I hope these tips help you figure out what to avoid when crafting the first scene of your novel and helped you 
identify some strategies to make an engaging entry point to your story. Let me know in the comments what approach you've taken to start your novel. I would love to hear what strategies you're using. And if you're looking for some more tips on opening your novel, I recommend checking out my video where I go through three of the best techniques for writing that first opening scene and that'll give you some tactical tips for what to do while this one covered what not to do. As always, if you found this video helpful, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. It helps me know I'm bringing you content that is interesting and allows me to grow this community. Thanks so much for watching and happy writing.